Hello everybody. I've been sitting here working on a new video that has to do with glute injections, looking at the two different types of glute injections, which I'll go into another time. But part of the work that I was doing was going through some research and some studies about intramuscular injections. And I stumbled across a really alarming statistic that I thought I'd share with you guys because this is quite interesting and quite alarming for those of us in the TRT community as well who are doing self-injections. So let's get right to it. Basically, um, the, 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 the study shows the success rate of intramuscular injections, primarily gluteal. And according to this recent study, the success rate of intramuscular injections varies between 32 and 52%. That is a success rate of intramuscular injections, meaning just under one in two injections are successful. Now that's pretty shocking. And this is within the medical community, right? This is nurses and medical practitioners. So let's just have a look at this study quickly and see what they say. This is this study was published in July 2018 and it's entitled A Narrative Review of the Success of Intramuscular Gluteal Injections. And here is sort of the, the crux, the crux of the study. It says there are 12 billion injections given worldwide every year. For many injections, the intramuscular route is favored over the subcutaneous route due to the increased vascularity of muscle tissue and the corresponding increase in the bioavailability of drugs when administered intramuscularly. This paper is a review of the variables that affect the success rate of intramuscular injections and the implications that these success rates have in psychiatry and general medicine. Studies have shown that the success rate of intended intramuscular injections vary between 32 and 52%, with the rest potentially resulting in inadverted subcutaneous drug deposition. These rates are found to be even lower for certain at-risk populations such as obese patients and those on antipsychotic medications. The variables associated with an increased risk of injection failure include female sex, obesity, site of injection and subcutaneous fat depth. New guidelines and methods are needed in order to address this challenge and ensure that patients receive optimum care. So again, like I said, under one in two injections are successful and this is within the medical industry, right? This is the nurses, this is the medical practitioners and doctors and that, and even they are having a less than 50% success rate in general, according to these statistics, which is quite scary. And this probably makes a case for, at least for us in the TRT community, that if we are having the same rate of, of not success, you know, if we're having such a dismal rate of success with to our TRT injections intramuscularly, maybe that makes a case for subcutaneous injections. Unfortunately, I haven't seen data on that yet, so we don't know if it's gonna be any more successful for subcutaneous, but at least it's, or it, it's worth exploring, I think, in the future. And this probably explains why a lot of guys complain or experience, you know, they go into social replacement therapy and then they say, I'm not feeling anything, or I didn't feel anything, or I'm having no effect, or I was doing fine, and then like, now and then I feel terrible, and then now and then I feel great again. And maybe what's happening is either they're self-administering these injections incorrectly, or you're self-administering them incorrectly, or the doctors or the nurses that give you injections are doing it incorrectly. And so maybe one day you have a successful one, and then another time you have an unsuccessful one, which would explain these, these dips or these ill effects that you're experiencing. So make sure that if you are self-injecting, if you're like me and others in the TRT community, even if you've got a doctor who's letting yourself inject, make sure that you know exactly where to inject, what muscle to do, that you're in the correct spot. Because if you're injecting incorrectly, then you could become one of these statistics and you don't wanna be. Now, I don't know if the rate for us guys in the TRT community is the, the success rate is higher or lower to the medical industry. Some of us pay more attention to detail because we we don't want to screw it up. And maybe in the medical industry, they just want to get it over with and they rush through it. I don't know, but I'm sure the statistics are pretty close to what they are in the medical industry. So again, make sure you're injecting in the right spot. And that's it. I've got to get back to work on the other video, but I thought this was quite interesting. I thought it was quite alarming and I wanted to share it so that you guys can pay extra attention to your injection sites when administering your own injections. So thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, just click the like button and I'll see you in the next video.